40th episode of Heart to Heart. I am your brother in the Lord, Brother HR, and I am so excited you could tune in to this broadcast today. I'm looking forward to it, and the name of the message is called, What Happens If We Fail to Forgive? Amen. What happens if we fail to forgive? And actually, let's just call it what it is when we choose not to forgive. You have the right to forgive. You have the power within you because of Jesus Christ to forgive. Amen. Glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory, Lord. Amen. So let's go over here to Matthew, the 18th chapter, 21 through 35. And I ain't going to read all of that today. I just want to read the first part of that. Matthew 18 and 21. Amen. Glory to God. The first two verses. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory, Lord. Amen, Sister Angel. Good morning. They did not take away her account from Facebook. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. So let me go ahead and pray before I read. Father, I pray you anoint your people to hear and receive the word today. Lord, I thank you that your word is already anointed and the glory is already here. Lord, we cast our bread upon the water. Let it come back as gold. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Glory, hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Glory, Lord. Amen, hallelujah. If you've got your Bibles, go with me to the book of Matthew, the 18th chapter, verse 21 and 22. Amen. Glory, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Then came Peter to him and said, Lord, how oft shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? Till seven times? And Jesus said unto him, I say not unto thee until seven times, but until seventy times seven. Wow. Wow. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory, Lord. Now, to the world, that would be interesting. They they would think that was an impossible act because 70 times 7 is 490 times a day you have to forgive. The Lord is telling him, walk in a constant spirit of forgiveness. Amen. Glory. Hallelujah. Holy Ghost. Because the Bible even says it clearly. Jesus says it. He didn't say it was for the Old Testament, and then it don't work in the New Testament. He didn't say that. Because I've heard a lot of people say that, that that's what was being done. You know, oh, well, that was for the Old Testament. Wait a minute. The Bible says, if you don't forgive, your Father in heaven can't forgive you, won't forgive you of your sins. Are you hearing me? We must walk in a spirit of constant forgiveness. That's something the Father's been teaching me for years. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, I am flesh and blood. I understand that. But let me tell you something. God is in me, and I, I'm i telling you what. We, as the body of Christ, need to learn to act like God is in us. Not just act like it, live like it. Because if he's in us, then we'll have the fruit of, of him being with us. By their fruit, you will know their mind. By the way they walk in love, one for the other. Brother Daniel, God bless you. I love you. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. So he's telling Peter, forgive 490 times. He's saying, walk in a constant spirit of forgiveness. Isn't it interesting, because of the act of unforgiveness that Cain walked in, 
toward his brother Abel and toward God because he was irate with God. He had an, a vendetta against God. He was upset with God. How many people in the world, including in the church world, get upset with God? Lord have mercy. Thank you, Jesus. A lot of people, it seems like in the house of God, get upset with God. And God told him, he said, oh, wait a minute, let me go a little bit. I'm jumping ahead of myself right there. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. But he walked in a spirit of unforgiveness toward his brother. Watch this. And he was judged for it. God put a mark on Cain. That's right, brother. You're right, brother Daniel. Amen. Hallelujah. God says that we are to forgive those who hurt us as many times as God forgives us. I love it, brother. That is a good word right there. I want to get back on here and do a teaching with you again, brother. Amen. I loved your testimony. I'm telling you, a lot of people have wrote to me about that. So you have touched a lot of lives, brother, for the glory of God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Genesis 4.24 says that if the punishment of Cain for killing his brother Abel was seven times then the murderer's punishment was going to be 70 times. Seven. Seventy-seven times greater than the punishment of Cain for murdering his brother. Do you see what it does? Sin adds up. It tallies up. It keeps going and growing and growing. It's like the Energizer Bunny. The Energizer Bunny keeps going and going, but sin keeps growing and growing and it tallying up. And one day, unless you let the Lord settle the score between you and the sin you're in, guess what's going to happen? It's going to end up destroying you. Unforgiveness will end up destroying your walk with God. It will end up destroying your relationship with everybody. It will end up destroying you as an individual until it finally takes you out of this world. Unforgiveness can do that. Absolutely. I'll get a hold of you soon, my brother, about that. Hallelujah. Thank you so much. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Again, when we play both judge and and jewelry, we've stepped into God's shoes and the price goes higher. That's right. He said in the word, if you say you love God and then you say you hate your brother, you're living in darkness. You've committed murder. That's right. That's right, brother. Amen. Amen. God's definition of judgment is different than ours. Amen. Glory to God. His judgment in the way we say things and do things is different than our way. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. That's why I'm going to leave the judgment up to him because he's a lot better at it than I am. Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Again, when we play judge and jury... The price gets higher. Brother Walter, God bless you. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. Praise God. Matthew 7 and 2, Jesus said, For the amount that you judge someone, it will be measured back to you a greater amount. So this man that decided to murder Cain passed a judgment against him and said, This man ain't fit to live. And he said, his punishment for killing his brother was seven times, but mine's going to be seven times 70. 77 times. He is going, it's the same 
thing that Jesus was talking about. Unforgiveness will increase in your if you would choose to walk in unforgiveness, then the price against your life because of the unforgiveness, the unforgiveness will grow in you. But now watch this. God told Cain to get things right. God told him, he said, don't let this settle in your heart. Don't let this unforgiveness rest in you. He said, if you do what is right in my sight, it will be well with you. He said, but if you don't, sin crouches at the door. Genesis 4, 7, offense crouches at the door. Amen. Because the Bible says that it is a sin to walk in unforgiveness. Okay. Listen to me. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Amen. Morning, Jolene. God bless you. Hallelujah. Amen. Sean, God bless you. Amen. Brother Richard, God bless you. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Amen. Genesis 4, 7. God said, sin croucheth at the door. Offense crouches at the door. I'm going to show you something. Genesis 4 and 7. What does unforgiveness do? It is a spirit, but yet it has the attitude of a wolf. It crouches. What else does it do? It lies in wait for your blood. Even a lion. The Bible said the devil is as a roaring lion. So let me tell you, it crouches and it also lies in wait for your blood. Proverbs 1, 10 through 19, Proverbs 12 and 6, it says that offense Lie, the offense that's in people's mouth that are wicked will go out and lie in wait for your blood. It don't just affect your spiritual walk. It can affect your physical walk. Mm -hmm. I think that is a good word right there. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Unforgiveness is a poison that eats you up. You're right. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. Unforgiveness is a, a poison that you're giving to yourself and expecting the other person to die. Jason, God bless you, my brother. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. But it lies in wait for our bones. It lies in wait for our blood. But check this out, y'all. Offense has been clinically linked to all types of various diseases in your body. It's been linked to arthritis. It's been linked to cancer. It's been linked to a lot of diseases. Proverbs 17, 22, and Psalms 32 and 3. David was so ate up by grief of his sin and also by the fact that he wanted, he wanted forgiveness from his friends that were supposed to be followers of God, but they wouldn't follow in God. And they would not forgive him. They wanted to conspire to get him off the throne. Now watch what happens. He said that his bones ached from his crying. Psalms 32 and 3. Proverbs 17, 22. Offense will dry out the bones. It can cause arthritis. It cannot just cause arthritis. It can cause cancer. It can cause heart disease. 
a lot of people are sick because of the sin they're in of unforgiveness. Oh, Jesus, that'll preach Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Amen. Jesus is the only cure for the sin you're in. He said that it's not the sick. It's not the, the well that need a physician, but those that are sick. Luke 5, 31 through 32. He said, I've not come to call the righteous, but the sinners to repentance. I've come to call them to repentance. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. So the Lord told you you're sick because of sin. You, you, you realize that you've got a spiritual disease as manifesting as a physical disease. Let me tell you the cure. Isaiah 53 and 5. By his stripes, you are healed. I'm going to show you something. He bled outwardly, but he also bled inwardly. And how do I can how can I prove that? He was wounded for our transgressions, our sins, and bruised for our iniquities. The iniquities are the sins of your forefathers revisited over and over and over. Generational curses. He was bruised. A bruise is a sign of inward bleeding to the blood vessels. It's a sign that the inward part of your blood vessels have been damaged. Amen? So he didn't just bleed for what happened to your life on that day. He bled to set you free from the bondages of your own family members that happened 40, 180 200 years ago. He came to set you free from their bondages as well. Not just your bondages. He came to set you free from your family's bondages. Are you hearing me? Isaiah 53 and 5. Every bit of healing we'll ever need, every bit of deliverance, every bit of everything we ever need is found through the blood of Jesus. Even David, when he fell, and he fell short of the glory of God. He prayed something. And what he prayed was, Father, forgive me. He said, Take not your Holy Spirit from me, but restore unto me the joy of my salvation. Put a right spirit within me. Then he said, Purge me with hyssop. Psalms 53. Purge me with hyssop and I shall be cleansed. The process of being purged with hyssop is they would take the hyssop, which is a humbling plant, it would bow down. It didn't stand up like a regular plant, it bowed down. So he came in humility for humbleness sake. And he said, Lord, purge me with hyssop. The plant would be dipped in blood of a lamb and the blood would be sprinkled upon the individual that had sin in their heart and the blood would cleanse and set free the person that was spiritually or physically sick because of sin. Sister Nikki, God bless you. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. So what was he saying? He was saying, I plead the blood. He caught a revelation of the grace of God, and he pleaded the blood of the lamb, which would, now the physical lamb, of course, would roll over their sin. It would they would be forgiven, but they would it, it would just be a temporary it, it would be like putting a band-aid on an open wound. And until Jesus came, sin had been adding up. 
The sins of man had been adding up and getting higher and higher and higher into the into the nose of God. Jesus, are y'all hearing me, my friends? But Jesus shed his blood, and his blood was the ultimate atoning sacrifice. He was saying, you ain't got to go through any more religious practices. It's over. I've come to set the captive free. And he says, if you'll just come to me, I will make you new again. Pray this prayer with me. And let me tell you, it's not the prayer that saves you. It's accepting truly by faith the promise of the finished work within the prayer. Hallelujah, Jesus. When you say, Lord, I truly repent and put my life into your hands. I give you my everything so I can have everything you are. Father, fill me with your spirit. I believe you died on the cross and that God the Father rose you from the dead, Lord Jesus. If you just said that and prayed that with me, my friend, you are saved. You belong to heaven. Your name just got written in the Lamb's Book of Life and all of heaven just herald your name throughout the courtrooms of heaven in celebration because of your life belonging to Jesus Christ now. Amen. Glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Yes, in the name of Jesus. Father, right now, I just pray for Sister Nikki. In Jesus' name, I rebuke the spirit of stress. I rebuke the spirit of anxiety and anxiety attacks off of everybody watching, Father. I declare the peace of God be upon each and every person watching. Lord, I just declare peace, perfect peace that only comes from you, Lord Jesus. Lord, deliver her and her family from this attack of the enemy in the name of Jesus. And Lord, I just plead the blood of the Lamb right now in Jesus' name. Wash her in her mind with the grace of your blood, Lord Jesus, in Jesus' name. And all her grandchildren, in Jesus' name, and children too, Father. In Jesus' name, Father God. Oh, Ramashakataborondoshi. Shakataborondoshi. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Lord, I just send the word of healing in Jesus' name, the top of their head, the soles of their feet, everybody watching in Jesus' name. Lord, I just pray a deliverance over those that are bound by the works of the enemy. In Jesus' name, I command the devil to loose them and let them go free in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. I declare peace, joy, and strength in the Holy Ghost. Father God, in Jesus' name, Lord, I just thank you for a miracle right now. In Jesus' name, amen. I declare that those that are in a situation right now in their life where they don't know what to do, I just declare you will live and not die to declare the works of the Lord because the Bible says we overcome the devil by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony. Amen. Glory to God. It is done in Jesus' name. Amen. Glory. Hallelujah. Father, fill everybody watching with the Holy Ghost and fire in Jesus' name, amen. I love you. God bless you. I'll see you in the next meeting, or I'll see you in the air in heaven. I love you. God bless. Let us choose to forgive and walk in the love of the Lord. Amen. In Jesus' name, amen.